write your notation. It's going to look like usually f of x equals maybe say a 2x squared minus a 3x. I could keep going. It could be any type of polynomial curve I want there. f is the name of the function. So I could change that f of x to a g, g of x, h, h of x. All right. The x has to correspond to whatever letter that polynomial curve is written in, whatever variable. So this is f of x if I've got an x and an x here because that's in terms of x. Okay, so in calculus a little bit later, we're going to learn that I could do a g, change the function name up, and I could do a g of y, which then would mean that the polynomial curve would need to be in terms of y. So it might look like a 2y squared minus 5 or something like that. All right, so this letter does correspond to whatever the function is written in. So that you might not have done, not, might not have been exposed to that in Algebra 2. All right, let's do uh, give you a couple functions, and then we'll just do two examples because I think we're going to be good since this is review. All right, so let's say that you are given f of x, and we're not going to make these really hard because I think you understand the concept here. Let's make it a 4x squared minus a 3 for my f function. And then for the g function, let's make it a x squared plus 6. All right, from there, let's do two questions. All right, as a first question, just plugging in a regular number. So if I did g of negative 3, okay, what that means is it means that I need to take negative 3 and plug it into the function, and I'm plugging it into the g function, and I'm plugging it in for x because this is really g of x, so that's telling me that that number is x. All right, so literally I'm going to start working it out here. I have one place to plug it in, so the base is the x. The negative 3 is going to be the base. So set a parentheses around that negative 3 because that's the entire base and then squared plus 6. Negative 3 squared is what? 9. 9 and 6 is 15. Okay. So that you definitely did in Algebra 2, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I, that's why I figured one example would be enough of that. All right. Now, could I put something else other than a number there? Yeah, I could put 2x. I could put 3x squared. I could put 5x plus 6. So I can put other things in there. So let's plug in just um, maybe say an x plus 3. All right. And then let's go ahead and just be a little bit more creative with this one as opposed to just doing that. Could I then also add to that um, just g of x? Okay. Just trying to play around with the notation here. f of x plus 3 is telling you to take x plus 3 plug it into the f function and plug it in every place that there's an x. I only have one place. All right, now this, you can think of this one in two different ways. You can think of you're just adding the entire function, all right, or you're taking the x and plugging that into the g function, which will give you the exact same thing that you've got there. All right, so let's plug this in here. So I'm going to have the 4 out in front. The x is the base. The plugging in the x plus 3 in there for that. So I've got that set of parentheses around there. Then I'm going to write the minus 3 down. Okay, so that's plugging that in there. I'm going to add to that the entire g function, basically, so x squared plus 6. And then it's no more than going through and algebraically fixing this. This is going to be a little bit of foil. All right, I would not necessarily try to do that 4 being multiplied by it all in the same step. I think I'd foil it out. So I can x squared, a 3x and a 3x would give you the 6x in the middle, and then a 3 squared on the end would give you the 9, minus the 3 plus the x squared plus the 6, distributing 4x squared, 24x, 36. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the 3 and the 6 together, so plus an x squared plus a 3. I still have some more like terms that I can put together. Check me, make sure I'm not doing this wrong. 5x squared plus a 24x 
plus a 39. Anybody else get that too? I'm seeing head nods, so that's good. All right, so you should have done all of that. And it doesn't make any difference. I mean, how complicated this is, what you're plugging in. Even if there's more than one X in the function, you would take that, plug it in in multiple spots. Okay, everybody agree that I got that, we got that right answer, right? Okay, now, the reason that this is together with the difference quotient is because you have to understand what function notation is to be able to do the difference quotient. The difference quotient lays the foundation for almost everything we do in calculus, okay? So we're not going to be doing any calculus. All we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this thing called the difference quotient. It is something you have to have memorized, okay? So difference quotient. We're going to look at it in one form this year since it's pre-calc. If you just randomly watch some video on YouTube on it, you might see the formula written in a different form. There's about three or four different forms, but we know what? When I have a variable, I can change up those variables, all right, and it really doesn't change the context of the problem. All right, so the difference quotient, the one that is in your book that we're going to use this year, is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x and then all over h. Okay, so it's a great big complicated thing. And like I said, right now, all we're going to do is crank out algebra. All right, if I looked at each one of these individual pieces by themselves, if I cover up this, well, you know what that means. Uh, X plus H put it in the function. If I ignore this, well, that's just the function itself. All right, and then you could draw a line and put over H anytime you want. So really, there's not anything too complicated about this. Now, the only thing that you really have to catch on this one is this is a subtraction sign in front of the function. If that function that I give you has three terms, four terms, five terms, all of those terms are to the right of that minus sign, which means you got to go through and change the sign. So you don't ever see brackets here around that, but initially, when I initially teach it, I put it there. Because if you've got three, if you put, if the function has three terms and you write three terms to the right side of that minus sign, you got to go through and switch the signs. Otherwise, all your signs are going to mess up and nothing's going to fall out and this isn't going to work. Then you're going to be frustrated. Okay. All right. So the questions basically are just going to say evaluate the difference quotient for the given function. All right. So we'll probably, we'll do two. We'll do like a medium difficulty one and then we'll do a more challenging one. All right, so evaluate, and I'm going to abbreviate the difference quotient for f of x. Okay, so there's my directions. Evaluate the difference quotient for f of x, and then I'm going to give you f of x. This one will start out with a eh, kind of a medium one here. Let's just start out with a um, 4x squared minus 2x. All right, now I'm going to do each individual part of this difference quotient at a time. So initially, I'm going to look right here. It says to take x plus h and put it in that f function. So here's my f function so that I'm just going to do this part of the formula. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in in two locations. So I'm going to have a 4, replacing it here, x plus h to the second power. Then I'm going to do the minus 2. I'm going to plug that into the function again, x plus h. All right, so I have done this part right here is me doing this first part of the formula. Then I'm going to write a minus sign down. I am going to initially here for you start with those square brackets, okay, because now I'm going to follow the formula. The formula says subtract the function. The function has more than one term in it, so that's why I want to put those brackets in there. So basically at this point, I just write down the function. My function is 4x squared minus 2x, and then we'll close those parentheses. All right, now this is the part that no one wants to do, but you need to do this. The rest of the formula is that whole numerator over h. So I need all over h. All right, now from here down to the rest of the problem, all this is is algebra. You're going to FOIL right here and then distribute the 4. You're going to distribute that 2 
you're going to go through and change your signs on that last part. And you just have to be really careful not to make any mistakes. I'm going to keep the 4 out in front when I foil. All right, so x squared would be an x squared. I'm going to have an x times an h and then another x times an h. So plus 2xh. Then you got to square the last one, h squared. I'm going to distribute the 2. So minus 2x minus 2h. And then just go through and switch the signs. Minus 4x squared plus 2x all over h. And every line, every time you do this, needs to be over h, over h, over h. Okay? Now I'm going to go through and distribute. So I'm going to have a 4x squared. I'm distributing the 4. I'm going to go through and distribute the 4. So then I'm going to have an 8xh and a 4h squared. And then just rewrite the rest of it. Minus 2x, minus 2h. Minus 4x squared plus 2x, and then all over h. Now, if you have done up to this point correctly and you have not messed anything up, dropped a sign, multiplied wrong, then several of the terms should cross out. I'm seeing a positive 4x squared and a negative 4x squared. Okay, so those two are going to cross out. I'm also seeing a negative 2x and a positive 2x, so those are going to cross out. And as of now, that's about all I see. All right, now I always rewrite at this point. I'm going to have an 8xh plus a 4h squared minus a 2h all over an h. All right, think back to algebra 2. What can we do now? What can we do with that numerator? It's a polynomial. Factor it, and the only thing that's going to factor at this point is factoring out the grace common factor, which is going to be an H. All right, so almost not enough paper on my room here. Say what? Oh, crap. So then did I do something wrong? Hmm, it's going to be a 2H. Hmm, why is it going to be? I don't want to do a 2H, though. Yes, it is a 2H. I agree with you. Now, why don't I want to do a 2H? Yeah, the denominator just has an H in it. So if I take the 2 out, it's going to be in factored form. And for calc, we don't want it in factored form. We want to have it all together. So I'm going to factor out the grace common factor. That will cross out with the denominator. That's how I should have said it. Okay, so I'm going to take out an H. That's going to give me the 8X plus a 4H minus a 2. Because the whole point of factoring it out is to cross it out. So there we go. Cross out those H's. And then I'm going to have an 8x plus a 4h minus a 2. And for right now, that's the only thing we're going to do with it. I mean, literally, that's the only thing we're going to do with it. Which right now, it just looks like you're doing more algebra 2 of manipulating all these polynomials with your function notation. All right, this has an extreme importance in calculus. All right, so over and over and over this year, we are going to crank this out. All right, now, how many people kind of followed that and did a pretty good job and think you? I mean, because it's just your function notation, right, with your formula. Okay, the longer this polynomial curve is originally, okay, makes it harder. Okay, usually it's going to be one term, two terms, or three terms. They're not going to do four or five. All right, that would just be too long. Okay, so let's, let, let's do one more and then let you try it, actually, without me talking as much. And then go from there. So let's do... Same, same set of directions. Evaluate the difference quotient for the function. I'm just going to give you the function here. f of x equals, let's say, um, 3x squared plus a 4x minus an 8. So I'm going to give you a minute. I'm going to rewrite that difference quotient up here in the corner in case you need it to look at. You've got it on your notes as well. All right, so somebody want to share their answer? Who's brave? Okay, do it. Yep, 
6x plus 3h plus 4. All right, how many people got right? Okay, so that means you can crank out your algebra 2 for the most part. All right, now, if you did not, you should be able to find your mistake somewhere. All right, when we do this and I grade it, I'm going to literally look at every line to make sure that you have every line written down on your paper. Okay, don't try to do this stuff in your head. You're replacing here, so your first line should have that replaced. All right, now, I will let you go, like, from here, change the signs. I will let you go from here to here. All right, so, because you know you're going to change the signs. So, minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 8. All right, foil this out. All right, then distribute the 3. I'll tell you, this 6xh is the term that everyone misses because they either don't have the 2xh or they forget to distribute the 3, one of the two. Distributing here usually is not a problem. This time we had three terms to cross out. The other one only had two terms to cross out. And then factor out only what you need to get rid of the h on the bottom. 